everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Kendra and today I'm going to be starting a reading vlog and this is a vlog where I'm going to read five of Nicole from the girly girl bookworms favorite books of 2019 and the five books that I have picked out to read from her favorites list is American Royals by Catherine McGee. Uh, this one definitely sounds really good and I haven't read anything quite like this before so I'm excited to read this one. The other one is Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell. I've been dying to read this one so I'm glad that is one of her favorites so I'm excited to read this one. The next one is No Exit by Taylor Adams. So many people have read this one so I'm finally gonna read this one and hopefully it'll become one of my favorites as well. Next one is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. Um, I'm really excited to read this one because I absolutely loved How to Walk Away. So I'm excited to read this one as well. And the last book that I've chosen from her favorites is Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt. She loves Ellen Hildebrandt like a lot and I haven't read anything by this author. So I'm really excited that I'm gonna read this one and this one was also on her favorite. So I'm really excited to read this one and hopefully she can be one of my favorite authors as well. So those are the books that I've chosen to read from her favorites list and I'm just going to vlog each of the books when I read them and yeah, that is what I'm going to be doing and I will see you when I have my first update. I am about halfway through Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center and I'm really liking this book so far. This is about Cassie. She is a female firefighter living in Austin and she is the only woman on the um, firefighter um, group? No, uh, what's it called? Crew, maybe? Um, so she's the only one, and the book starts out with the guys joking with her, and this one guy's like, ooh, I really want to sleep with you, but he was literally just pulling a prank, and they're at this, uh, banquet because she is getting awarded this, um, award that is very prestigious, and when she goes up to accept the award, the person that is giving the award to her is a guy named Heath, and he is actually, um, I believe, like her ex-boyfriend. I haven't really found out yet, but she goes up to accept the award. He ends up like squeezing her butt or something, and she literally knocks him out with her award. So that was pretty funny. So then like uh, the next day at the fire station, her chief tells her that she needs to apologize to him and she literally says no. And um, so during all of this, she also has an estranged mother that um, she finds out is blind in one eye and she asks her to go help her out. She says no because, you know, they haven't had a relationship in a long time. So, um, so basically back to her, uh, her chief tells her that if you don't, if you don't apologize, then we're going to have to, um, I think put, put her on a suspension or something like that. I, or go to a different um, fire station. Well, she ends up telling her, well, I could go live in where her mom lives in Massachusetts and get on there at the fire station there and work there. Well, this particular fire station is not fond of having women work in their fire station. So when she finally gets there, um, she's also starting the same day as a rookie as with another rookie well she's not a rookie with a rookie and it's both their first days at on the job and she instantly has an attraction to this guy and um let me backtrack she hasn't dated anyone since this guy the guy that she beat the crap out of um hasn't dated anyone since then so um she hasn't really you know doesn't really want to date or anything because of that because there's something that happened I don't know yet what it is but she instantly has attraction to the rookie and they both end up having to work together a lot so they are they start having a connection so that's how far I've gotten so far I'm really loving this a whole lot and I'm hoping I can finish this real soon and then as soon as I finish it I will let you know my final thoughts on the book
have finished Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. And I think I'm going to give this book three and a half to four stars. Um, when I was reading this, I was really liking it. And then it just got to a point where I felt like the book just wasn't completely flushed out. And I felt like it was very underdeveloped, especially in the romance part of this book. Um, I just wasn't feeling their relationship and I felt like it was very very rushed and also I could not stand how she kept calling him rookie and it just kind of got under my skin and I thought it was just really strange. Um, the thing that I really did like about this book was the mother-daughter relationship. I loved how she you know moved to uh, Massachusetts to help care for her mother because she was in a rough spot and um, with her eye being blind and I really liked how they were building their relationship but then it got to a point where that part of the story just kind of ended and it went straight into the romance of the book and I really wanted more of the mother-daughter relationship. I really loved that part of this book and I felt like if that would have been more part of this book, I think I would have um, really given it a higher rating because I really had a huge emotional connection between Cassie and her mother. I just loved that part of this book. Um, and also, and then I also liked how it was set around a fire uh, station and her being like one of the only fire women firefighters. I found that very fascinating and I really loved that. And you actually got to experience some of the firefighting with her as well. So I really liked that. And like I said, I liked the mother daughter relationship, just wanted more from it. I wasn't a huge fan of the romance. So yeah, I ended up giving this one a three and a half to a four star. Overall, I still really liked it. Um, I did read um, How to Walk Away a few months ago. I absolutely love that book. And also I liked how there was like a small like little um, connection with How to Walk Away in here. There, there was like a paragraph about the book in this one. And I thought that was really cool how they kind of interconnected in a way. Um, so I did like that, but overall I thought this was a, it was a decent book. I felt like it could have been a little bit more flushed out and maybe even a bit longer and you could have gotten more I could have gotten more connected with the romantic relationship but overall like I said it was a pretty good book. Um, the next book that I'm going to be starting is No Exit. I'm really excited to start with this one. This is an adult thriller. about a third of the way through No Exit by Taylor Adams. It's an adult thriller and this is about Darby. She's on her way to see her mother because she's about to go into surgery and her sister sends her a text message, text message saying that she's okay for now and she finds out that her uh, mother has pancreatic cancer and she's trying to get to her before the surgery. However, she is driving through a massive uh, blizzard and sh uh, one of her windshield wipers like blows off. So she needs to um, either pull over or something until this snowstorm passes over. So she sees a sign for a rest area. She ends up making it to the rest stop. And when she gets there, there's three other vehicles in the parking lot. And she parks beside this van and she glances in the window and sees a little girl's hand inside of this like crate. She is then trying to figure out who the heck's van it is and why there is a kid inside of a crate in this van. 
So that's where I am and this book is really good so far. Like it's kind of suspenseful and I'm really dying to know why this kid is in a crate and who the heck it is. Um, I kind of figure who it is. They kind of hinted one of the person, one of the people that it is. So I'm just curious to know why the heck this guy has this, uh, kid in the back of their van so so far really liking this so when I'm finished I will give my final thoughts on this book and so far I'm really liking it and I'm hoping that this will be a another thriller that I really really love I have finished no exit by Taylor Adams and I ended up giving this book five stars I absolutely loved it this was definitely a action-packed thriller and it definitely left me at the edge of my seat and I will never in my life go to another rest stop again nor will I probably ever go with anyone else either and there was actually a few times in this book where it was super cringy like it was grossing me out and I'm usually not I don't get queasy like during books but whew, there was a point where I was like, oh my god, this is absolutely disgusting, but love this book. Um, there was a lot of twists and turns that I did not see coming, and yeah, I just absolutely love this, and I'm so glad I picked this up. I'm so glad that I read this for this vlog, and it is probably going to be one of my new favorite thrillers now so super glad I picked this up and I highly recommend this one if you have not picked it up yet so yeah glad I read this I'm also about a fourth of the way through American Royals by Katherine McGee and at first I really wasn't loving this book but now I'm starting to get more into the drama and I'm really starting to like it now uh, this is like a YA I don't know fantasy historical fiction drama I, I don't really know how to classify this but this is like set during present day as if uh, George Washington and his wife were the king and queen and it's like generations later so like I said it's present day so you are following Patrice she is the oldest daughter and she's about to be crowned queen um, and eventually, they don't really say when, but she's the next one to be crowned queen and she's in the process of looking for a husband. And then you're also following Daphne and she is, and she was with one of the other siblings in the Washington family, one of the twins. She was with, um, him, his name is Jefferson. So you're following her story and then you're also following Nina which is the other twins best friend which is Samantha so you have and then you're also following Samantha as well so lots of drama once I get more into this I can give more of a better description but so far it's okay I'm it's okay I like I said the I think what's uh what I'm really liking is the drama of it and yeah so when i have a, another update i will let you know so i have decided to dnf american royals by katherine mcgee this book i got to page uh, 184 and i don't know i just wasn't really emotionally connected to any of the characters and this book is technically classified as a YA, but all of the characters that you're following are in college. So I felt like maybe this book should have been a new adult and maybe been more, um, I wouldn't say mature writing, but more, I don't know. There just wasn't any, it, it read to YA to me for how old the characters were. So I really, like I said, wasn't really connecting to the characters. So, and I was kind of bored in a way. Like, yeah, there was drama between like all the characters and um, it was mainly like relationship drama, mainly. And I don't know, I just, 
there's other books that I'm more interested in reading and I really didn't want to force myself to read another like two 250 pages so I just decided to DNF this one and I'm sorry Nicole that I DNF this and I know it's one of your favorite books but it just wasn't for me so I'm going to be done with this one and I'm going to pick up um, Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell I did end up reading about 32 pages and I'm really liking this one so far and um, once I get a little bit farther I will give you a better update. I ended up finishing Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell. I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. I ended up really really enjoying this one. This is an adult thriller and I believe I really didn't give you a description of what this book was about. So this is about um, you're following this woman named Beth. She is on the run from her abusive husband and then you're also following a man named Jeffrey and his wife went missing and her name is Sabine I think that's how you say her name so you're kind of thinking that Beth and Sabine are the same person but you're really not sure um, so I really liked that about this book and then you're also following a detective named Marcus and I I think what I really love about thrillers like this type of thriller is that when you are um, involving a detective you're you're getting more of like the police um, storyline like you're getting more of the missing persons and like what is actually going on instead of more of the drama part like the um, wife and husband type of drama I think that's what I really like more than just a family drama with a mystery so I think that's why I really like this one a lot there was a huge twist in this one that I kind of saw coming but I really liked the twist so I was okay with kind of knowing what it was um and yeah I just ended up really really liking this one and I'm really excited that I ended up picking this one up and it's another thriller for this year that I have enjoyed so that's really exciting because um, I feel like thrillers here lately have just been really um, underwhelming I don't know they just haven't really caught my attention and hasn't really had any good twists or anything but I really enjoyed this one I'm so excited I read it and yeah so another good book that uh, Nicole uh, also liked last year. So I guess the only other book that I have left to read is Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt. I'm super excited to read this one and as soon as I have some thoughts I will let you know.
am almost halfway through Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt and so far I'm really enjoying this book. It's very slow and um, this is a kind of like a historical fiction. It is a historical fiction because it's set in 1969 but however it reads very contemporary and this is about a family. You're following a family. Um, the mother, she has four children. She has um, three daughters and one son. She um, had her first three children with a previous marriage and her husband was in the Korean War. He came home and he was like cleaning his gun or whatever and it went off and he ended up killing himself and then she ends up marrying um, a lawyer. Um, so and then they have a child together. So then you're also so you're following her and then you're also following um, the three daughters and then also the son just got um, deployed to Vietnam. So he is in Vietnam and then um, you get a little bit of his perspective through letters that um, he's sending to his sisters and his mother. Um, so then you have the oldest daughter. Her name is Blair. She is married and she is pregnant. Um, one day she goes to visit her husband who is a astrophysicist in um, at a university I believe she goes to visit him and the secretary or the student whatever was telling her that he had a private appointment um, so when he gets back because she said that she was going to wait on him um, he gets back and he has like looks very guilty and looks like he was sleeping around so she finds out that he's having an affair so on top of that, to um, uh, the guy that she married, she was actually dating his younger brother first, and then she ended up marrying him. So that's kind of unique. Um, so you have that storyline, and then you also have the middle daughter. Her name is Kirby. She is a civil rights activist, and she's in her early 20s, and um, she... So the whole point of this is that in the summertime, they all their whole family goes to their grandmother's um, house in Nantucket, and they all spend the summer there together. Um, so obviously, the son is not going to be there because he is in Vietnam. And then the oldest daughter, she's married and is about to have a child, so she is staying back. And then also the middle child, Kirby, um, she does not want to go to Nantucket either. She's decided that she wants to get a job and work and basically hang out with her friends on, um, where is she at? She's at Martha's, Martha Vineyards. Um, so she's there for the summer. And then um, you're just following her and then you're also following the youngest daughter Jessie. She does go with her uh, mom and grandmother to uh, Nantucket and she's not having a great time because none of her family is there and she's super close to her brother and obviously he's in Vietnam so she's really um, nervous for him and whatnot but yeah so a lot going on and I really like the character development of all of the characters. I love all the different perspectives and it, it's um, like I said a historical fiction but it definitely does not read like a historical fiction. Um, it is very slow. It's uh, not, a, not a book you can like quickly read but I'm really taking it all in and really really enjoying this so I'm really excited to see where this goes and whenever I have more thoughts, I will let you know. I have finished Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt. I ended up giving this book five stars, but first I want to talk about everything that is going on in the world. It took me a lot longer to finish this book because I wanted to reflect on everything that was happening. I wanted to listen to what everyone was uh, saying and then I also just wanted to educate myself on more of what was going on and how we can proceed in the future of you know making this a better situation and a better world to live in. Um, for me I 
Um, we'll be reading more person of color authors um, each month. Uh, usually I don't pay attention. However, that's where I needed to educate myself and actually pay attention to who I'm reading and the more diversity in my reading. Um, but during that week, I did post tons of recommendations and books that I want to read by black authors. If you want to check out my recommendations for those, please check out my Instagram page and let me know in the comments if you want me to do a recommendation video on black authors. And also I will have some resources in my description box for you to check out. And yeah, I am just deeply saddened by everything that is going on and my heart goes out to all of those families that have been affected. So I want to talk about Summer 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt. I gave this book five stars. It took me a lot longer to read this one um, than I anticipated. Um, it's a very slow type of book. However, it was absolutely excellent. Uh, I loved how it was a historical fiction, but it definitely didn't feel like historical fiction. It felt more like a contemporary book. I loved the family drama in this book. You got to follow all of the siblings and the mother, and you really got to know these characters really well. This is a character driven book, by the way. That's probably why it's a very slow type of read. Um, but I loved every single character. There wasn't one that I didn't want to read about and it just, this just was so good. Uh, it definitely left me in tears at the very end of this book and I will definitely be reading more of Ellen Hildebrandt in the future. I am so glad that this was my first book by her because it definitely set the stage for what she is as an author. So, so excited I read this one. Um, if you're looking for a character driven historical fiction that is more contemporary, I definitely recommend checking this one out. So that is the end of this vlog. I want to quickly tell you the ratings of the other books. Um, so I gave Things You Save in a Fire by Katherine Center. Uh, three and a half stars. I gave No Exit by Taylor Adams five stars. Then I ended up DNFing American Royals by Catherine McGee. Um, and then I gave Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell five stars. And then also Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrandt five stars. So I would have to say that me and Nicole have very, very similar taste in reading and I will definitely be reading more of her books since we have very similar tastes. So that is the end of this reading vlog and until then I'll see you in my next video. Bye!